Hey there, all of you cool, epic, and awesome fans, followers, and listeners. Welcome back. This is episode 29 of the Cool, Epic, Awesome podcast. I am Matt, your co-host. And I'm your other co-host, Joe. And this week, we have three films to go over, two of which we saw in theaters, and he's, one which... He's solid lineup. Yeah, films, one which, which Joe recommended two weeks ago. Yeah. You, you could give him the films, because I know you were hyped for one of them, at least. Yeah. Um, so, I, well, I don't know why. I just, I've always loved, like, the kind of, like, aesthetic or, like, theme of, like, a haunted or, like, horror type of thing. So, I, like, hearing that there was a Haunted Mansion movie, like, I was really intrigued. And I, I like the, even from the start, like, I like the designs of all, like, the ghosts and stuff. So, I was actually pretty excited for this. Yeah. So, we saw the uh, new Haunted Mansion film. Directed by Justin Simeon, starring uh, Lakeith Stanfield, um, uh, Owen Wilson, Danny Rosario DeVito, Dawson. yeah, Rosario Dawson, Jamie Lee Curtis. Pretty stacked cast, yeah. To be honest, and going in, I didn't really expect much. I I remember watching the first Haunted Mansion, like the original, as a kid. I don't really remember yeah. much from it. I know you rewatched it recently. Yeah, I rewatched it recently, and like it's honestly pretty bad. <laughs> Really, I I like I liked it like way more as a like you when I was younger. Like looking back, it's like awful. And then I looked it up; it like bombed, and like it had horrible reviews when it came out too. So, do you know was like the movie based off the ride back then, or did they base the? No, the so the yeah the movie was based off the ride. Okay, but like loosely, like I think this like this interpretation of it is like more accurate to like the lore of the ride. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I don't remember riding it to be honest. But. I mean, I the only like I I well, I went to I went to Los Angeles like last weekend, and I went with my girlfriend and I went on the ride. It was actually kind of cool because like I got to see like what you know. It, it really does fit the like it feel like if I if you could describe going on the ride, it does. That's what the movie's like, like the whole, the feel of the mansion and everything. So it is pretty accurate. Yeah. I mean, I would assume so. I feel yeah. like, well, Disney has been trying to make some, uh, like ride movies. I feel like, like they, like, Jungle they Cruise, were, yeah. they just did. They're doing Tower of Terror with, uh, Scarlett Johansson who produced it. Yeah. Um, ever since, I mean, cause Pirates of the Caribbean made so much money for them. Yeah. I actually really like the movie though. I, yeah, I no, like it a lot more it. than I expected. Yeah, and all was, the performances are great. I think that's yeah. like why I really liked it. I didn't think it was particularly like very funny. There's a couple funny moments no, in it. I, I thought it was like 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 family funny, like you know. Yeah, but I liked like the the dynamics between the characters. I liked the chemistry that they had to, like by the end of the movie. Yeah, and Lakeith Stanfield, you could just tell he's like he's too good of an actor to like yeah. be in yeah. something like this. Like he was acting circles around everyone i mean yeah. not that the cast isn't good or anything but he was just like on another level yeah he was he was super dialed in especially in like there's moments where he has to get emotional and yeah. shit and, you know he was going crazy with the tears yeah. the story was actually a lot like deeper than i expected yeah it had, they brought up this fact of uh the like the main guy we follow yeah. who's uh played by lakeith his wife like passed away so when he realizes you can like communicate with the dead, he's trying to, he tries to like figure out a way of maybe he could speak to his wife. Like, yeah. um, pretty deep stuff. Yeah. You know, I, I really liked, um, Owen Wilson though, as well. I thought he was really funny. Yeah. Like the fake father. The con man. Yeah. 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 And I was impressed with, uh, with Keith Stanfield do playing like a comedic role. Um, yeah, I feel like I haven't really... I mean, honestly, the only thing I really remember is Get Out. But I've never seen him in, like, a comedy type of... Yeah, he's in um Uncut Gems as well. He's in... Uh... What's the What's one him? with... Uh... Have a Nice Day? It's something like that. Uh, I know I know what you're talking about. It's like a weird one. Yeah. That's like a comedy, I think. Yeah. But I really liked him in... Uh... He has a small role, but... What the what the fuck is the movie about like fifty cent? Or no, about Ice Cube. In the hood? No, straight isn't it like straight out of Compton or something? Hold on. He's in that. Oh, he plays, oh and oh shit, yeah, straight out of Compton. 
he plays a Snoop Dogg in that. Oh, really? Yeah. And I actually really yeah. like that movie. Yeah, he plays Snoop Dogg in that. He's in, um, what's the other one that he's, that he's in? I don't know, regardless. He's like a yeah. very talented actor. Yeah. So, I like Jamie Lee Curtis in this as well. I, I really yeah. like her as an actress. and She did pretty good with yeah what she was given. What did you think of, like, the villain, like, Jared Leto? I, I, I thought it looked, like, really good. I, like, for the CGI looked, for the, I thought the CGI was honestly really good in the movie. Yeah, I agree. And you could, the ghosts aren't, like, fully CGI. They're actual yeah, actors. Yeah, like, like the, like, the bride-looking one was, like, like, that was, like, an actor. Yeah. And I like that they went that route, where it's, like, yeah. It's not just like a full CGI creature. It's no, yeah, actual people. Um, I'm trying to think what else about the story, or if I had a favorite scene. But honestly, it's a small scene, but I really liked um, the what's it called? The scene where they're like describing the the ghost to that cop. It was in the trailer. Oh yeah, but it's just it's just mad funny. Like yeah. his comedic timing's really just great. With yeah. you got Danny DeVito in there also. Um. Yeah, I was gonna say before, like, it is a lot harder to do comedy, like, which doesn't really yeah, you wouldn't out, you yeah. wouldn't think so, but a lot of times you see great comedic actors able to do serious roles, yeah, you know, which is like you know Jim Carrey and Eternal Sunshine, which I just rewatched the other day, yeah, um, but it's hard to see like serious actors go into comedy because you have to have a certain type of like timing. Of, yeah, you know, so props to him. I would say he's probably my favorite character as well. Yeah, he's definitely the the most. I feel like everyone else is just kind of really basic. You know, there's not really much to them. He's the only one with really any depth. Yeah, and I know you mentioned to me that you didn't really like how it ended, like with the. uh Yeah, like I, I, I don't know. I just felt like it. It was way too like CGI. -y. I don't know. It felt like I, an MCU ending, kind of. I, I see what you're saying, but also, I mean, it is like no, ghosts. Like, it's no, supposed to be like fantastic. Like, they didn't have, like, they could have, like, done, let's say, like, take that scene and, like, put it in, like, that stretching room. So, like, there's not, like, a million fucking CGI ghosts flying around. And it's just, like, the, the hat buckles and, like, them, like, fighting. Yeah. I feel like that would have, I don't know. Yeah, they could have, I mean, I didn't mind the ending. To be honest, I, I kind of like not that like I didn't like fucking, love it. Like she but, flew in on the horse. I was like, all right, like, uh, yeah, I mean, that shit was kind of stupid. And also, uh, Owen Wilson ends up like befriending the ghosts and they like carry him in and shit. Yeah. Um, that was pretty funny. Uh, too bad yeah, this. I mean, I the know. movie was pretty solid, but it's doing absolutely awful at the box office. I mean, it was pretty much doomed for a failure. I feel yeah. Like. They couldn't market it. Because of the strikes going on. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, they could market it, but the actors couldn't. I know they had, like, a red carpet thing where they had... Um, the fucking mascots. Yeah, they had the Disney characters the walking characters, on the red carpet. Like, college minimum wage workers walking <laughs> on the fucking carpet. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, excuse me. Um, yeah, I mean, that was kind of creative, I guess. But Nah, I know, but it's just like... <laughs> Bro, if there's still an actor strike when um, FNAF comes out... They gotta get the animatronics on the red carpet. They're gonna have like all the fucking like they're gonna have like Mark Blyer. They're gonna have like all the streamers there. Yeah. Um. But yeah, what you said about the box office though. Um. What, what did it make opening again? It was like thirty. Like thirty three. I just saw it pass like sixty million yeah. this week. But yeah, no, I, I'm sorry, I lost track of my thought there. But uh, I was saying it's like a perfect storm of bad events happening, which is that. And it the was the set. It was the second weekend after of. Yeah. Barbenheimer. It was the second weekend after Barbenheimer. Yeah. It was. And they both had like record-breaking second second weekends. Yeah. During a writer strike, you release a spooky Halloween movie yeah. in fucking the end of July. If they would release this in October, I, I even without the writer strike, I guarantee it would have at least like broke even. Yeah, and also the budget's fucking. The budget's like a hundred fifty mil. million. Yeah, I know. What are they doing with that money? I guess that most of it went to the cast, but it's not yeah. like I don't know. Disney is just I don't know. Some they they're obviously very smart in ways, 
But like sometimes they've been throwing out a lot of shit, like, dude. Lately. Yeah. I mean, listen, I I liked Elementals. I thought Elementals. Was, I mean, now it's doing good at the box office, but that's been like their biggest fucking box office success. Probably, I mean, I don't know. Maybe the little no, the Little Mermaid. It just like broke even, right? Yeah. About probably I, Elementals made them the most money. Well, it's because fucking the Little Mermaid didn't make money in China. Yeah. Because they're, they're like racist and they it's, wouldn't see the movie. Yeah. But um, it like bro- it just broke even, or like it just turned a profit or something. Like yeah, that. I actually like the Little Mermaid. Yeah, no, I thought it was, I thought it was pretty solid. It's weird though, because like th- th- these movies, the Disney live action remakes, at least the two that uh, came out this year. I mean, Haunted Mansion isn't like a live action remake. I mean, yeah. whatever. But I actually like both of them, and I thought they were pretty solid. But it's just like you can't justify the budgets. Nah, yeah. Because it just doesn't make sense. I don't. Disney just fucking throws money around like it's nothing. Yeah. I, I mean, don't know now if you also saw back, I feel Loki like gonna... season two is uh, like 141 mil budget. Yeah. And yeah. Secret Invasion was 212. Well, like, I feel like, did you read why Secret Invasion what? was so much? Was it... So, like, apparently there was, like, a huge subplot about something going on in, like, Ukraine. So they had to completely, like, because of what's going uh, on, like, obviously there, they had to, like, completely get rid of that. They had, like, four months of reshoots. So that's mm. why the budget was, like, like $200 yeah. million. That is kind of bad luck. But... Yeah. It's, like, it's not there. I, even I heard in, like, uh, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, like, there was some something with Ukraine go and that, too, and they had to get rid of it. Really? Yeah. No, I think they're... Actually, yeah, maybe you're right. Um... Definitely yeah, for Secret horrible, Invasion, I heard about that. Because, like, think about it. Like, ha- even though the CGI was, like, pretty, pretty good, it shouldn't cost, like, $212 million. Yeah. It's because it, it took four... They had four months of reshoots. Yeah, and it was during COVID filming. Mm-hmm. So. But, yeah, but back to Haunted Mansion, though. I was going to ask uh, if you had a favorite scene in the movie. Um, Honestly, I liked, like, when he's... Like, what is it? Like, when he actually projects and, like... What is that? Oh, what do they he, call that again? When, when he goes into the other side. Yeah. When and the then like goes, the, yeah. And then like the uh the hat box goes just starts like tormenting him and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that was, was cool. Scene. Yeah. I thought the hat box ghost was like I mean, he was pretty like menacing, I guess. Yeah. Nothing crazy. I mean, obviously the movie's made for kids, but like yeah. I just that might have been my favorite Jared Lawrence, to be honest. Yeah. It's better than that than fucking Morbius. Bro, we watched two Jared Leto movies this week. I know. I just realized that. Um, but yeah, I, don't, I don't know if you know this too, but originally there there was originally going to be like a Haunted Mansion movie directed by Guillermo del Toro. That would have been cool. And I Ryan, like that's, and this, like, that's right up his alley. Yeah. Honest. I don't know why they didn't do it. He had a script and everything. Ryan Gosling was going to play the lead. And then the guy who played... Um, he's he's like the actor who played like the fish guy in a, uh, Shape of Water. Oh, uh, what the fuck's his name? Whatever. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he was going to play the Hatbox Ghost. Oh, that would have been cool. Is the Hatbox Ghost like part of the... A big part of the ride? Yeah, he's like the... Like kind of the... Cent- not I don't know about the center. He's like kind of the main character of the ride. I see. And is he like the bad? He's the bad ghost. Like I, in the movie, I know there's like the yeah. reveal at the end that the ghosts are good. I mean, like cool. like they don't say that. You just like see him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's hard because a lot of times they have like these. There's like, all right, we want to make like a a movie about a ride. They just have to like yeah. fill in the blanks. And shit, you know. There's actually like a story. Like this one, I kind of makes sense because there's like a story behind the ride, at least. Yeah. And also, like, a haunted like, mansion. Yeah. Like, it's like, you could think of something. Like, all the characters in in the, like, the hat box, so it's like, whatever the dude, like, William, whatever the fuck his name is. Like, those are all, like, characters in the ride. Like, they didn't yeah. make those up for the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But this overall, was, like, I mean, kind of, like, justified, I feel like. Yeah. It was it was a fun watch. Like, it, yeah, was, no, I enjoyed it. it was harmless. I mean... This gonna, is definitely gonna like. I feel like when it gets, re- it's gonna come on Disney Plus probably like end of September, October, and it's gonna probably do really good. Yeah, I'm sure it'll do good on there. Yeah. Um. 
But yeah, if we could get to ratings, unless you, I don't know if you had anything else you wanted to say about it. No. All right. So I gave it a three and a half stars, seven out of ten. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I just, it's not really much justification for my rating besides that I liked it, which sometimes is enough, you know? Yeah. No, I feel you. The performances were great, though. That's probably like the main yeah. reason why I rated it so high. And the story, I thought the story was pretty good, too, honestly. Mm hmm. But yeah, I gave it as well three and a half, seven out of ten. Uh, the cast definitely does uh, carry the movie, but I mean, this the story is pretty solid for like a Disney movie. It's pretty like I don't know, yeah, it's deeper than I would have expected. Definitely could have been worse. Yeah. So, and Jared Leto, barely, his face is barely in it. So yeah, it's a plus. you honestly can't even tell it's him. I know, probably for the better. Yeah. Um, all right, so we move on to the other film we saw in theaters, which was TMNT Mutant Mayhem, and it is an animated film. Uh, it's produced yeah. by Seth, Seth Rogen, Rogen, who has surprisingly has a great fucking track record with producing well, superhero stuff. Yeah, yeah, he d he's doing he did uh, the boys Invincible, um, and yeah, just I'm not really the biggest fan of ninja turtles like i don't know the yeah i don't really, really yeah. that well but the film basically follows obviously the four turtles um splint master splinter and like it's sort of them first becoming heroes yeah. like they aren't really allowed to go out or go out of the sewers for anything and then like eventually they start doing it and they end up like finding other mutants that are bad and it's kind of like a like an origin story in a yeah. way. And I liked it. I, yeah, I enjoyed I, it. I, I really enjoyed the animation. Yeah. Um, this is like another effect of Spider-Verse being so great that all all these new stu new uh, animated movies have this. Like, I feel like though it's type of style. It, 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 I like like it was unique on its own, but it also like it is a Spider-Verse style, but it had like its own unique type of look. Yeah, and I like how um, what's it called? How like grungy? I guess it is. Like it feels like super like dirty in a way. The animation and it like yeah. makes sense because they're living in the sewer. Yeah. And New York is they want to like make New York look dirty. You could tell yeah. like all, all the civilians in it are like the most demented, ugly looking people. Yeah, people, which I kind of liked. <laughs> like you know, like when you think about it. Think about yeah. how the people looked in the like movie. they kind of like if you look they kind of fit in like with the way the people look. I know. Um, what was I gonna say? But yeah, besides the animation, the story it wasn't like it was okay. I mean, it's it's pretty basic. Yeah, it's just the oh the protective father doesn't want to let his kids out, exactly. and then they end up like he ends up trusting them by the end, like whatever. It's pretty yeah. basic. But I think it works for a starting point because I know they're yeah. going to do more with this, with this uh, franchise for sure. Apparently, they have like a TV show they're going to do with the same actors, like the same voice actors. And yeah. then between, and then they're going to do a second movie. Do you know where this uh, show is going to be? Paramount. I think Power Paramount Plus. I'm assuming. Interesting. I also saw something that uh, the animation style is going to be different. Yeah, the like the show. TV show is gonna be like a, a 2D style, and then the movie is gonna be because that would be like a ridiculous like imagine how expensive that would be. I know, yeah. But the casting choices, I think, oh, like across the board, were pretty. Yeah, they were great. Yeah, Jackie Chan as Splinter is just perfect. Yeah, I actually really liked Ice Cube as a super fly. Yeah, me too. I thought he was perfectly cast. Yeah, all right. I don't know, good. like. I don't know, like, how that, like, character is in, like, the Ninja Turtle lore or whatever, but I thought it was portrayed pretty well. Yeah. You had Bebop and Rocksteady. They don't yeah. really have much going on. One thing I no. didn't like is how, like, all the villains end up, like, teaming up with the yeah. turtle at the end. I kind of wish, like, they stayed as villains, you know? I mean, I'm sure, like, they're going to start, like, they'll, like, steal shit in a few, like, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, speaking of casting, I think the main four are also pretty perfect casting. Yeah. Um, uh, 
there the, the thing that's different about this compared to other takes on it is they're actually like teenagers yeah like i think the actors are like in the 15 to like 17 age range i would say yeah which and makes they it like you know, they like but, sound like actual teenagers yeah, that was that was one thing that was like a little corny to me was when I think a lot of it was improvised where they would be like, all right, they probably heard the teens like talking to each other and were like, yo, let's incorporate that slang into the movie. Yeah, like they literally say Riz in the movie. Like one of the turtles says to the other, he's like, you have no Riz. You have no. I was like, the yeah. fuck, bro. But there's also this one scene that's like. They're talking they're about, talking like, about like bacon, bacon, egg, and cheese. cheese. Like it just goes on for like rock. so long, like it's way just, longer than it needs to. It's so corny, bro. Yeah. They want to act like it's acting like, yeah, we're hip. Like we know how the kids talk, but like you know, I'm sure it's funny for like a fucking like ten year old. But yeah, I was gonna say for like the TikTok generation, it's probably funny. Yeah, but I'm starting to feel more and more like Squidward every day, bro. I swear, yeah. I knew what That's he was. How life be when you're an adult. Yeah, but um, what else can I say? Uh, also, a part of the movie takes place in Staten Island. That's like where the villain's base yeah. was, and it's like right near our house, which is kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, it was funny when they mentioned it. Um, I forget. I don't know who says it. One of the one of the. I think it was John Cena. Who does he play? Well, yeah, John Cena, Seth Rogen character. Like, well, I love. Yeah, well, they're like, they're like, they're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or one of the other guys, like, it's Extended actually the best the bro. <laughs> yeah. It was funny. Like, my yeah. theater was laughing because, like, we watched it instead. I don't know. Anytime we get, like, a shout out and something. Yeah, it's like kind of funny. Yeah. Um, trying to, let me think if I had a favorite scene, though. I really liked uh, that montage of them when they first started fighting, when they're, like, going to all the different the bosses. bosses. Yeah, that was just going to say, I like that. that and the way it was, cool. like, cut together. Yeah. I really liked that. I also like the original, uh, or not the the initial like first time that they fight when they beat the fuck out of all those guys to get the to get uh, April's, April's bike car. back. Yeah, I mean car uh, bike. Yeah, I know people were upset because April is a uh, no longer a tall ginger, but now she's a short, chubby um, black girl. But I don't really think it matters. Yeah, to be honest. I, first of all, like. But I feel like people... Like, how do you care that much about, like, Ninja Turtle yeah, lore fucking, that... Yeah. I don't know. But it is... I mean, it is weird in a way, because it's like... It's not like you cast an actress that sh- happens to be black. Like, you design the character, you know? So you could draw them however you want. Like, what's the purpose of changing it, a- aside well, I, from... I think, like, in you know? the... In, like, originally, in, like, the comics, it was... Um, it was like a, a black lady. That was April O'Neil. Yeah. But I don't pe- know. People, I, mean, I know people I'm, like saying like, oh, she's ugly. I'm like, bro, do you see the way the people look in that fucking universe? Like, they're all supposed to be like a gross yeah. looking. Yeah. I mean, it's all like the incels that are like, because bro, yeah. I think, I think she's basically supposed to be like the eye candy of like the Ninja Turtles. Like she's yeah. like the, like the Mary Jane or like the glasses yeah. or whatever. So people got annoyed, but bro, it's it's animated. Like who the fuck cares? Who the fuck honestly? cares, dude? Like it's a kids movie. Do you think yeah. like the fucking twelve year olds watching this give a fuck about that? I don't know. I doubt it. No, there's no shot. Um, yeah, but the actress that played her, I think, did a pretty good job too. Yeah, as mentioned. Also, She's in, Post, like, Post Malone's in it for like a. Yeah, he plays the dude that sings. Yeah. Yeah. Um. John Carlo Esposito plays that guy at the beginning. That the was like a cool, kind of, yeah. Kind of also, out. apparently, Mr. Beast is in it. I didn't pick up on who he was. Yeah, he's but... like some dude in Times Square. Apparently, I think it might be the guy that like, you know, when like he, he like puts his hand out to like help the, one of the Ninja Turtles up. Uh, he's like, "Are you okay?" I think it might be that guy because he's like Times Square guy. Yes, yeah, I, I don't remember like what what he sounded like. I wasn't like looking for his voice yeah know? yeah if i went back and watched it, i'd probably be able to figure out yeah which one was him um favorite character though i honestly did really like superfly yeah the most out of all of them i would say i agree just perfectly cast mm-hmm. he's also your favorite character mm-hmm. and then i also really liked uh 
Paul Rudd's character, the Gecko. Oh, uh, what's uh, his name? Some Mondo Gecko or Mondo something. Mondo Gecko, yeah, yeah. He was great. Paul Rudd was great in that. Yeah. Um, I expect him to have like a smaller role, but he he has like a pretty decent. Yeah. Lead. He like has a lot of lines, of it, yeah. dialogue and stuff. Um. But yeah, I don't know. I I don't think it's as nearly as good as Spider Verse. I know it has no, like ninety seven percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Not even close. But that, like in terms of animation quality, like it's on par with it. But like the, in terms of like story, mm-hmm. it's the, the Spider Verse that blows it away. Yeah, this is a way more simple story. Yeah. Honestly, I, even the even the animation I think is a little less less great, but still very good. Yeah. Not that much. I wonder if we'll ever see Disney try to do a similar animation style. Well, like apparently that movie that wishes in that style. Oh. It's like a combo of that. If you look at like the trailers of it, you could tell it's like it it kind of looks like that. It's not it's like a mixture of it. Yeah, I I liked how that was animated in the trailer. Yeah. I think I, mean, I, I wonder what we'll... the next like movie that's going to be animated like that is. Probably Morbius. Probably FNAF, the animated FNAF. I think they film. Don't do a FNAF movie. Imagine if they did a FNAF movie, <laughs> like an animated FNAF. Yeah, that would be fire. Nah, I don't know. It, dude, it's I don't know. It's probably gonna be a superhero thing. Yeah, a Batman um, movie like that would be sick. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Um. So yeah, I don't know. What else do you have to say about TMNT? Oh, I enjoyed it, but yeah, I, don't know. I thought that I some of the dialogue was like a little too cringy for me. Yeah, I'm. I don't know if I'll watch the show, but I'll definitely like check out whenever the second movie comes out. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna watch the show, but I'll watch the second movie. Yeah, unless it gets like great reviews or anything. Yeah, but yeah. To get to ratings, I also I gave this one also a three and a half star, seven out of ten. It's close to a four star, but. Like it's closer to a four than a three. Yeah, but um, it's just the dialogue for me is like yeah. Two. A lot of that stuff took me out, and I just thought yeah. the story was a little bit too simple. So still a great movie. It's better than Haunted Mansion, I think, but not quite yeah. a four. Yeah, I agree. So you gave it a four as well. Same. No, I give it a three and a half. Or a three and a half on it. Yeah. All right. Cool. Got matching a uh, rating so far. Yeah. But yeah, that does it for those two films. Uh, we could talk a little bit about some movie news within the past two weeks. I don't know if you want to talk about. Uh, we both saw Talk to Me. Oh yeah, this weekend yeah, as we well. Could talk, we could talk about it. Which um, I really liked, honestly. What did you rate it? I gave it four stars. Okay. Yeah, I gave it a three and a half. I think that it was definitely overhyped for for a directorial debut. It's great. It's amazing. Definitely, but I, I, I like it was way. Like, I don't know. I didn't expect it to be like kind of. I thought it was gonna be kind of like a surface level horror movie. I didn't really like. It was kind of deep. Yeah, you to know? me, it just it wasn't scary to me. No, yeah, like it was creepy, but I was never like scared during the movie. Like, and like I, remember, I scare like, easily, bro. But, but I, like, I feel like I don't get scared easily. But like, even like I remember going into the movie, I was like a little nervous. Like I was kind of anxious going in because like, it looked like fucking mad scary. And then, like, halfway, like, as I watched through the movie, I was like, this really isn't, like, that bad. It's just, like, there's, like, some creepy scenes and stuff like that. But I think yeah. it, it's, like, for a horror movie, in terms of, like, quality, because I feel like usually you get pretty shit quality horror movies. Like, this is really good. I think they rushed the ending a bit. It's kind of all over the place. Like, I remember, I knew the movie was 90 minutes. So, that scene happens where uh, she kills she, her dad. Yeah. And there's like fucking like five minutes left in the movie. I was like, well, how are they going to wrap this up? And yeah. I think they kind of just like rushed to the ending. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cause but, I was kind of like, how did, how did she, like, I thought like she was going to get like arrested or something. I was like, I, I didn't, I thought like, cause I didn't expect them to just go hard to go straight to the fucking hospital. I was like, how far did this skip in advance? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I just think it was a little bit overrated. People are like, oh, it's the scariest movie since Hereditary. It's the best horror movie since Hereditary. Like, I mean, I, I think it's definitely like the most, like, you know the term like elevated horror? Yes. Like, I think it's the best elevated horror movie we've had in a, long, in, in a while. 
I mean, yeah. I don't know if I prefer this or men. I don't know if you liked men. No, I like I like I like this better than men. Because that's also another elevated horror kind yeah. of thing. I thought this was better than men. I really didn't. I didn't find men scary either. I was more well, maybe because I saw men by myself in the theater. No, I saw, so I I was, saw men with you. No, bro. I saw it myself. I remember well, going to the would. theater myself. I was shook because I was fucking watching Did I see that it horror myself movie. Too? Um. No, dude. I I remember seeing you with you. No, bro. I promise you, I went by myself. I have like a visit a vivid memory of seeing that movie alone. I remember being extra scared. Hold on. Maybe you saw one of your friends. But who the fuck would have saw that with me? Maybe Joseph Richard. No, I don't know. Whatever. We're getting off topic. Either way, I don't know what, bro. What did we see? Oh, we. I know we saw Crimes of the Future. Right. (laughs) It, bro, it wasn't men, bro. I'm telling you, it wasn't. I remember watching that shit myself. Uh, did you Whatever. see it again with me, maybe? No, nah, I don't think yeah, so. Whatever. It's Anyways, yeah, but talk yeah. to me. The one thing I did like it about it, not the one thing, but one of the things was like the take on uh, communicating with the dead. How it yeah. like feels, it kind of feels like a drug, like it's a party trick. It's not something yeah. that like we've seen really before in horror. Yeah. Which I I enjoyed that. It's a, it's a cool idea for sure. Yeah, and I like how like because I feel like that's how like a teenagers would act if they got in possession of that. Like it's pretty realistic. Yeah, I really I, I mean I heard it was, there's a lot of body horror going in, but there really wasn't. Nah, much. it was not. Yeah, that was definitely a letdown. I thought they could have been a little more creative with a demon like the I dead really, people I, too. I did like the uh, the scene of the the kid like basically fucking killing himself and trying to rip his eyeball out and stuff. I thought that was cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a solid movie. It's a solid movie, just not nearly as good as I think people would. It's not the best horror movie to come out this year. That's <laughs> Evil Dead Rise. What do you think is bad? Yeah. For sure, I think. Yeah. Um, so if it's not even the best of this year, it's not the fucking best since Hereditary, that's for sure. But, I think uh, it's the best since Hereditary in terms of elevated horror. Yeah, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. I could agree with that. Yeah. And I don't want to sound like a hater. Like I did like the movie. Yeah. But I just it is a bit overhyped, I think. And I was telling you before, uh so there's the opening scene of the movie. Um, so basically it's it takes place at like a party. The movie takes place in Australia. And um these kids are having a party and basically like this this brother like locks himself in a room and this other brother's trying to get him, like to tell his friends to leave. And you bust the door down, and you see, like, the kid's, like, has, like, all, like, scratches on him and, like, blood. And he comes out of the room, and then he just, like, stabs his brother. And then he just, like, stabs himself in the face. And the director said they shot, like, a whole movie, like, a kind of like a prequel, like, just off that one scene. That would be pretty sick. I mean, because yeah. you, could, you could tell that, like, you could He's just been use using that, it. You can like use that hand, yeah, for, uh... Yeah. Like other films, yeah. you know, like other people. There's so much you could do with that. Like you saw, like the, the the person that was using it at the end of the movie, it was like somebody in like mm-hmm. a different country. Yeah, yeah. So I wonder if they'll ever revisit it. Maybe. Yeah. I think I kinda, it's. I, I don't. It had, I feel like it it had a low budget. It was made for like ten mil, I think, or something. No, I think less than that. Or maybe four mil. I think it was I think four mil. Four and a half mil. Some. I see. Um. Yeah, four and a half mil. What did it make this weekend? I think it made like ten million first weekend. Twelve million. So yeah. triple this budget. Nice. But yeah, I mean we'll see what this uh directing duo does in the future. I really love them as like people. Like if you watch their interviews, they're all they're very excited they about seem like, really like down to earth. Yeah. I know they met with DC and James Gunn wanted them to do a project, but they turned it down. Yeah. People thought it was gonna be like a Waller episode. Uh, they're doing maybe. a Street Fighter movie. That's cool. I mean, I don't know One, shit about Street Fighter. Yeah. But I, I'll just watch it because they're attached to it, probably. Yeah. But uh, anyways, yeah. I wanted to get to the movie news really quick. Uh, the first thing was we finally got a trailer for Saw X, Saw 10, which yeah. got moved up a month, by the way. It was supposed to release on the same day as FNAF. Yeah, I think they're a little scared. They, got, they pussied out. They, yeah. they didn't want to go up against Freddy. If we're being honest. Yeah, there would have been no competition. Um, so now it's releasing the same day as Paw Patrol. So 
that Saw Patrol. I hate the fucking Saw Patrol shit. And I, because I, I, I know like people are gonna force like these like you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, but it's bro, gonna, gonna be it turns you mad fast, bro. It's literally gonna be a race to the next Barbenheimer for these studios to like yeah. try to like put movies against each other like that. And it's gonna like be so like cringe because it's it's gonna be forced. Like it's not gonna feel as like you know. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, I, the trailer though, I really like the trailer. It it kind of goes back to the roots of Saul. You know, yeah. John Kramer's back. He's like one of the most underappreciated horror icons. I think he's such a beast, bro. Tobin yeah. Bell, I love him. Um, I don't know if you've seen all the Saw movies. No, I've seen like a couple. I've seen all of them, and they definitely dip in quality for sure, especially towards the end. Yeah, but uh, this Tobin looks Bell, like more. I know you people. I saw people saying online like this is more of like a true to form, like the original. Yeah, and they Saw said movie. they they purposely made the film look like. Like how the originals look, they have like this yeah. sort of distinct like color tone and grungy kind of feel, and you could see it in the trailer. Yeah, I like the trap scene pretty creative, which is cool, and that's always like the best part of the movies, the traps. Yeah. Um, if not a the insane storyline with like John Kramer's survive, he like died. He dies at the end of Saw Three, and he's yeah. in every single movie like after that. Still, how? they somehow like. Like, I don't know, it's either like, oh, it'll set be set before Saw 3, or like, it's a video recording of him that, like, he recorded before he died, or it's always, like, some bullshit. Yeah. But, I, it's, like, funny. Like, I like how they just don't care. They're like, we have to have John Kramer in it. Yeah. Um, but you saw, like, I saw Spiral as well, the one that came out a few years ago. Yeah, how was that? It was okay. It wasn't, like, terrible or anything, but... What, what, is, it, what, is there anything, like, different about it than... I mean... The only difference is there's no John Kramer. Who is really, it? Just like a random I forget. Dude. I think it's it's revealed that it's someone who like you think is good at the beginning, but they turn out to be like bad. Yeah. I, I forget who it was, but it was just like weird. Like you have Chris Rock in the lead. Like the fuck is he yeah. doing there? You know. But and actually, uh, an, another trailer they released. I forgot to say was uh, the Exorcist trailer. Oh yeah, I forgot about that one. Yeah, which I I didn't even know they released. I saw it in theaters. Like when I went to go see Talk to Me, I feel like I didn't like they didn't have like a ne- any like release, like on on the internet or anything like that. I posted it on um our Instagram account. I th- I actually really like the trailer. I think it looks pretty solid. Yeah, it looks solid. I mean, obviously, The Exorcist is like a masterpiece and in, yeah. in horror, and but they they've done Exorcist sequels before. Like, there's an Exorcist two and three. Yeah, you know, so I don't think it's untouchable or anything. No, but. It seemed really creepy. Like it, I was sort of getting like the same kind yeah. of vibes from as the original. I like the the stylistic choice of using black and white. I don't know why. Like especially those scene those shots at the end of the trailer. Yeah, I'm wondering if that's actually going to be used in the movie or if it's just like for the trailer. Purposes. I hope so, but I kind of doubt it. Yeah, I doubt it. I just feel like how would that like fit in to the movie? Yeah. You know. No. But yeah, it looks really good. That'll come out in October. So, talk about that at some point. Yeah. Uh, another trailer, though. We got um, Loki Season 2, which people always say, oh, Marvel fatigue, this and that. It was, like, the most viewed trailer for any Marvel Disney Plus show. Yeah. Like, 80 views on YouTube. Um, the one thing that interests me about this trailer was you could see Jonathan Majors, like, pretty front and center. He's the last shot. They show him as Kang. They show a picture of, like of a wall mo- mount, not mount, yeah, or whatever, like him on a wall, his face. Isn't and there a shot of him like actually in the trailer? There is, yeah, yeah. He's like Victor Timely at the end. It shows him. Uh, I saw I saw shit online that like they're gonna kill him off at the end, and then like the new actor is gonna be like revealed at the end of the series. I bro, it's looking more and more like they're gonna keep him. Really? Bro, did you see what happened with the trial? No. So he basically went in to for a trial for the whoever was like suing him. Yeah. And the person just didn't show up. And then they realized that the person fled the country. <laughs> Why? I don't know. But it like helps his case so no, much. Yeah. You know? I mean, as long as he actually is innocent, like I want him to to stay. 
I mean, but, yeah, as long as he's not, you know. But I don't know. I feel like a lot of people like coming out saying shit about him. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, he could be a dick, like whatever. But as long as he's not like assaulting women, you know, yeah, yeah. that's obviously something different. Um. Yeah, you know, Tom Hiddleston looks good. You got a Kihoi Kwan in there. Yeah. You see, I'm glad that he's back in Hollywood. You know, such a great dude. Yeah, that's a nice story. They, Sylvie's back as well. She's working at a McDonald's for some reason. I don't. I don't really know what the fuck's going on with that. Yeah. I have a feeling that they're going to somehow tie the show into Deadpool 3. Because Most likely. The, the TVA amazing. is involved in Deadpool 3. Yeah. And it's also the next movie that releases after the Marvels. So I feel like it would make sense for them to do like a post credit scene. Really? That's kind of nuts. I didn't even realize that. Yep. Marvel's in November, and then Deadpool 3, I think, is in... Well, I don't, I don't think it's going to make the March date now. Yeah. No, I doubt it. Um, it was supposed to meet Friday, apparently, but nah, I don't know what happened. Yeah. But yeah, looks good. Yeah. Hopefully, it's good. Secret Invasion was kind of a letdown, so. Yeah, that was kind of an insane letdown. I don't think it was terrible. I just think it was kind of pointless. Like nothing really. Like nothing really happens, and then just her character was her character. Just Gaia like, oh, just gets like every single power. It's kind of just stupid. Yeah. Like, how is she? Like, it's just kind of like, what the fuck is the point of her character? I mean, I enjoyed the show because I love Samuel L. Jackson. I love Nick Fury. So I could just, like, watch him doing shit. I'll be entertained. Yeah. But I get why people did it, for sure. Yeah. And I think they fumbled the fucking finale super hard. Oh, yeah. Um, but whatever, man. Whatever. Hopefully, yeah. Loki's good. Loki's Another. Good. I yeah. think Loki's definitely going to be good. Another tidbit of information about the. An F movie coming to us later this year. Yeah. Um, apparently, the film is three hours long. Like, which I mean, that's kind of nuts for a fucking straight to Peacock movie. Straight to Peacock horror of an IP. Three I hours. This like this isn't like a Martin Scorsese bro. I thought this was gonna be ninety minutes, hundred percent. Like before. I mean, before... there is a there is a lot of lore. But, yeah, that's the. I don't know. They got to be setting up all the movies and shit. There's no way they they I, like establish all this lore for no reason. I feel like three hours is a bad choice though, because it's gonna deter people from coming. I think. I mean, this is apparently it's not like definite yet. Yeah, we'll see, bro. They could split that up into two movies. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that is interesting. We are starting to see movies be longer and longer as we go on. Um, Scorsese, uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, I think it's fucking four hours almost. Yeah, it's gonna be insane when we have to sit in that theater for that shit, bro. It's gonna suck. You're gonna have to order Yeah, um, yeah, just a couple other things though. I do want to talk about we did Barbie on last week's episode, but for the box office, it actually reached one billion today, yeah, which is the first Get movie that was directed. Solely but, by a woman, but, yeah. to reach a billion, and Greta deserves it. Absolutely, honestly. Um, yeah, it's insane how well it's doing. And Oppenheimer also just reached five hundred mil. Yeah. So, I know you're like, oh, it's half of, but for an no, R-rated, for an R-rated three-hour historical dr- fucking trauma. Yeah. This is like what we were going back to before of people trying to like mimic Barbenheimer. This is yeah. why, because of but how people fun- are going to realize like. The reason why this one worked is because both movies are actually really good. Yeah. Like, chances are, one, like, the movies are going to suck that release on the same day, you know? I don't think it's going to be, like, anything close to this. Yeah. We'll see. Maybe someone will do it. Yeah. Um, but what else there? It's, like, two more things. Uh, we got a director for Scream 7. Uh, Radio Silence, who directed. They're, like, a directing duo. They left... That not they didn't leave the project, but aren't they doing they, like a monster movie or something? Yeah, they're doing a monster movie for Universal, so they're going to be busy with that. And it's the main girl on Scream, right? Yeah, Melissa Barrera is in that. But here's the thing: if they're too busy to do Scream because of that, isn't Melissa Barrera also going to be too busy? And she's the main character of the franchise at this point. Maybe they're attached to something else. I don't know, but I mean, they could be done filming and like they just have mad editing and shit. 
Yeah, but the director they chose is Christopher Landon. He did a Happy Death Day and, and Freaky. I've seen Happy Death I Day. I liked a, it. I feel like it's a pretty boring choice. Yeah, I, I put something on the Twitter about it. I, I don't know, bro. I mean, he, like, uh, like, like, think outside the box with this. Scream was originally directed by Wes Craven, one of the most famous, iconic horror filmmakers ever. And yeah. now you're getting Christopher Landon to do it. Like, this isn't Happy Death Day. It's Scream, you know? Who would it's your got... ideal director be? Mm, I don't know. Probably Dwayne The Rock Johnson. No. Uh, I don't know, bro. We're just not Christopher Landon. Like, Alex Garland, maybe. Uh... I feel like, he, I don't know, he's way out. Like, he wouldn't do Scream. Bro, fuck it, bro. Give it to the, the Rocka Rocka people. They just did this shit. Talk to yeah. me. They could have... Bro, they're, they're fresh meat. Yeah, you know? yeah that I sure of it. The only thing is, Christopher Landon is a safe choice. Like, it's not... Yeah, I don't I think it's going to make a I don't terrible think movie. Gonna, yeah, like, it's not going to dip in quality, but I feel like you're going to be getting pretty much the same thing. Yeah. And it also is weird because... I'm not sure if who's writing it, but this is like basically the third film in a new trilogy. And you have like a director for the first two that had the story lined up and then you switch up the director for the third one. So yeah. it does kind of scare me with what they're going to do with the story. Do you think they're going to lean into the fucking. Uh... Her being like, like Melissa. Yeah. And yeah. I, mean, I feel like it's too obvious. I don't think they would do that. And I also think it would be stupid. Yeah, I think it would be really stupid. If they did that. Whatever. I guess, I mean, we're not going to hear much from it because of the strike, but whenever they yeah. there's updates, we'll talk about it. Then the last bit of news, which is one of the most mind-boggling decisions of uh, recent memory. Apparently, Gal Gadot is coming back to James Gunn's new yeah, DC to be, to be Wonder Woman. Yeah. So fucking stupid. I just, like, would prefer another actor do it. I just, I don't know. For nothing against her, but how are you going to have a new Superman, not Henry Cavill. A new Batman, not Ben Affleck. And bring back the same Wonder Woman. It's going to confuse audiences, first of all. Because then they're going to think, oh, we have to watch Wonder Woman 1 and 2. So before we, like, see this. They're going to... I feel gonna like by the, time, by the time they get to this, like, they're gonna, that's going to be so detached from, like, this, this like, DC universe. Like, that's going to... It's going to feel so different from that. I don't know. It's just stupid. Because think about it. They're, if they're developing it now, when's the earliest it's going to come out? 2027, 2026? Yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, I, I would just prefer, like, I feel like there's better talent out there. That's why I kind of don't, like, you know, want it. Mm -hmm. But if the, I feel like that character also, like, if there's one to recap, not like that could stay, it would probably be her because, like, Wonder Woman doesn't really age. So it doesn't really matter. I yeah. mean, she has to look like young, you know, youngish, but like, but she's really like a thousand years old. So, you know, it doesn't really, you know. Mm -hmm. I just think it's stupid. Like, why are you going to recast? No, I agree. I don't. Two I don't of the big, I, like two of the big three and just keep one of them. It's just dumb. Yeah. No, I completely agree. And it's not I like Gal Gadot is this fucking yeah. national treasure of a, a Wonder Woman. Like someone else could do it. I'm sure. Yeah. My only hope, though, is that because she basically sent an interview like, yeah, me and James Gunn are developing Wonder Woman 3. I mean, they could just be developing it. Maybe she's just developing it. I, I, may, I was thinking if she wants to be involved, maybe like behind the camera instead of in front of it, be a producer, even direct. Yeah, I mean, who knows? like that would I would much prefer that. And then they then for them to bring her back. Yeah. Just, so stupid. But whatever. Yeah, it is kind of dumb. I guess I can't judge until we see a, a finished product. Yeah, we'll see. Um, but yeah, all right. That's it for movie news. Yeah. Now, our list for this week, which uh, I suggested last week, or on last episode, I wanted us to break down our top ten funniest films of all time. Pretty fun fun one, I think. I, I have a pretty safe list. Yeah. But like... It's like mine's pretty generic. I mean, I think my top choice is pretty out there. Not out there, but not what you'd expect. Yeah. Yeah, I could start. I'll do my 10 and then you do your 10. Well, so for 10th for me, um, I had the movie Kicking and Screaming. 
starring Will Ferrell. I think for me, a, a reason why this one was so funny is because I watched it a lot as a kid. I know we used to watch yeah, it. With I Dad. forgot about that. Yeah. I there's like so many quotable moments from it, like the juice box kid thing. Yeah. And and shit like that. But uh I don't know. That to me was just a really funny one growing up, and then when I rewatched it, I still was laughing. Yeah. So, yeah. What's your time? Ten I actually had Barbie. Really? Yeah. Like I, I mean it's it's not like a traditional comedy, but for, in terms of like me laughing, that's the most I've laughed in the theater in like recent memory, honestly. Yeah, it was funny, but when I saw it a second time, I didn't like the joke. Yeah, maybe bad. maybe like because I, I haven't seen it like for a second time. Yeah. I don't know how I mean obvi- obviously that. like jokes aren't gonna be the same once you know yeah, no. but like I just was realizing alright that wasn't actually as funny as I thought, you know. Yeah. But yeah. I'll I'll respect your number ten. Yeah. Number nine, this one is kinda out there. It's the it's the movie Bruno starring Sasha oh, Baron bro. Cohen. Yeah, that's on my list too. Bro, it's basically for those of you who don't know, it's kinda like the same idea as the dictator or Borat where Sasha Baron Cohen is playing this character and like interacting he's with like real a, people. He's like a European like gay model. He's like a gay like fashion model, but he's like so flamboyant and like yeah. so insane out there. And, and he goes does. down to like the southern United States. Yeah, there's like the scene at the end where he goes oh, to like bro. Some- the wrestling match. <laughs> wrestling match. And then <laughs> they're all like they're all rooting for him to get beat up because he's like this flamboyant, like little like like fairy, you know, yeah. whatever. And then like he starts making out with the other guy <laughs> in the middle of the ring. They're like throwing their fucking beers on on stage and shit. So <laughs> funny. I feel like a lot of the the movies that interact with like real people, like stuff like that. Yeah. Like impractical like, jokers and shit like that. I, I yeah. find all that really funny. The guy one of my um the Eric Andre show is like one of my favorite comedy shows. But yeah, Bruno. That's like one of Sasha Baron Cohen's like lesser known because I, I mean, it does have a lot of like, I guess homophobic stereotypes in it. But yeah, it's not. You know, I don't think it's he's most proud of that at work. No, but like yeah. he, I don't think he'll do anything like with that again. Like how he did Borat too. I don't yeah. think he would come back. To this. No, apparently he's doing something with the, his the character Ali G. I've never really. I've seen like. I haven't seen. Yeah, before. I haven't seen that. But I, I saw something that like he's supposed to be doing something with that. That's cool. Um, he's a he's such a talented actor. Yeah, he's apparently going to be in Marvel too soon. Yeah, he's going to play Mephisto. Pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what was your nine? Yeah. No nine. I actually had uh, Step Brothers. Now, I haven't seen this in a while, but I remember just there's a lot of like I know like a lot of iconic scenes in it. I remember like as a kid, like watching this at a friend's house, like when I was like I was younger, like I definitely shouldn't have been watching it. I remember yeah. finding it like hysterical. Yeah, that one I I didn't want to put in two Will Ferrell movies, so yeah. I chose like Kicking and Screaming, but that yeah. was definitely like on the outskirts of like almost yeah. making my list for sure. Yeah. Um. All right, but yeah, number eight I had a uh, Deadpool, the first one. I remember when that came out, it was just such like a new idea of the character, like interacting with the audience. And there was all the, like, these meta jokes, yeah. like breaking the fourth wall. And it was just mad funny at the time, like when it came out, we were also a little bit younger. So I think a lot of like the crazy, like humor with like rated R humor was like more funny to us at that funny point. Us, yeah. And, but I still think like, it's, it's very clever. It's well written. There's obviously like the joke about him not wanting like the green super suit and like, yeah shit like that i mean deadpool 2 also is funny like him like ryan reynolds like killing himself so that he doesn't do the green lantern movie like stuff like that like all that fourth wall breaking stuff i think is very funny yeah so that was eight Um, for uh eight i had napoleon dynamite oh Uh, i fucking forgot about that yeah that one definitely. I feel like that's it. such a like a satire movie. Like you have to it's a specific type of humor that you gotta like to think that movie's funny. Yeah. And it's like I think both of our we yeah. both find that. Just like how stupid it is. Stupid it is, yeah. Yeah, damn. That was a big miss for me. I can't yeah. believe I forgot about that. It's a great choice though. 
Yeah. Uh, number seven, though, I had the original Hangover. Um, yeah. It's, again, just so many quotable moments, iconic moments from it. You have like the sat. The, it's not a. It's not a man purse. It's a satchel. Yeah. Like that. You have like you know the Mike Tyson tattoo and all the shit. Or maybe is that the second one? I don't know, but whatever. I think um, that's the second one. No, I don't think I don't remember. It's just like such a easy idea for a movie. Like you friends black out drinking and then like they have to repiece together what happened from the yeah. night before, you know. We've all been there. Yeah. Not not the hangover style. Not that insane, obviously, but it's just very funny. Yeah. So yeah, that was seven for me. Yeah, for uh, for seven, I had Ace Ventura, and I feel like this is more of like a nostalgia pick mm-hmm. because I, I mean, Matt, you remember watching this as a kid? We used to find, I mean, this franchise in general we used to find like really funny. Yeah, it's on my list too. But the second yeah. one, when Nature Calls, I had. Not yeah, the, I like I like that one better. What? That's the one where he goes to the the jungle. Oh, okay. Like he goes the to the first thing. The first one is the thing with like the the dolphin's mascot is missing. Oh yeah, yeah. You're the right. second one is with the bat. Yeah, I prefer the second one. But well, you yeah, know, that's tribe. You're right. Yeah, that's one we used to watch with dad as a, as a kid. That's another one where it's like so many quotable moments. Yeah, like the Monopoly man is a great. Remember that? Yeah. And like when he give he give like he the uh, he he comes out of the rhino's fucking. Yes, yeah. and when the he gets uh, he gets like the two spears in his legs, and he does like that motion. That's like a oh, famous yeah. scene. Um, but yeah, I, that's on my list too. It's coming up later though. Yeah, but number six, I had super bad. It's probably higher up for you. Yeah, I would assume. Yeah, but just such a realistic depiction of high school life, you know. The way that they fiend for parties and like how how they talk so like raunchy and like yeah it's the dialogue is just so realistic to how like real life is another one with just so many iconic moments like the obviously the McLovin yeah using his ID and shit and like Emma Stone's also in there she's great in that um the yeah, the cast is like really really good looking back yeah and that movie was actually written by Seth Rogen which I didn't yeah. know until recently. He wrote it. I saw something he wrote it when he was like 17. Well, kind of nuts. All right. What was your six? Uh, six ahead, Anchor Man. Which, okay. uh, this is another like kind of, I feel like it's a little more satire than like straight up humor. It's, it's like some more stupid humor than, uh, you know. Yeah. No, like I said, I only wanted to have the one Wolf Arrow one. Yeah. Another, another one that could have made it. Yeah. That one is another, it's a great cast, you know? Steve Carell, yeah. Paul Rudd, Will Ferrell, and what the fuck's the other guy's name? Um, I don't know. What the fuck? Uh, I don't know. But yeah, that's a good choice. My number five, though, was Ace Ventura. When Nature Calls, we just went over it. It's, you know, there's yeah. not just so, so many quotable moments. Like when he, we I said a bunch of them, but like when he eats like the bat dong by accident, it's <laughs> like uh I don't know. I, it's he, one that we used to watch with dad when we were younger, another one. Yeah. I feel like being exposed to those movies when you're too young to see them like makes them more funny. Way yeah, you way know? more enjoyable, yeah. So, what were you gonna say? You were gonna say one of the other moments in there though? Yeah. Well, oh no, like the rhino thing. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was my five. Yeah, for uh, five, I actually had Bruno. Okay. Um, I I love like that type of like, like real life satire type of humor. That's like more my style. I'm curious. Have you ever seen Eric Andre's movie on Netflix? Oh, uh, Hot Pursuit or whatever it's called. Whatever. I forget what it's called, but he like I haven't. You should watch. I heard it. it's like not. It's not like his normal. Oh, it's stuff. called like, it's like Bad Trip or something. Yeah. So it's really funny. I liked it. But it's him like fucking with real people. It's like the yeah. same idea. But it's just like formed into like an overarching story. Yeah. You know. But yeah, that was your five, you said? Yeah. All right. Four, 
little unconventional pick, I guess, but I had Ladybird. A different Greta Gerwig than you chose. But yeah. I just that's not the type yeah, of that's movie really I thought funny, I would yeah. enjoy or find funny. But when we I watched it with you, bro, we were cracking up the whole time. Yeah. Like Timothy Chalamet's character I in particular. Yeah. So I didn't funny. even think about that. When he like it's built up all this like how he's gonna like have sex with uh with the girl and then like he yeah. finishes in like one second <laughs> and he like I, I don't know. The scene it's is just like mad talking funny. about the back war. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, mad funny, but yeah, Greta Gerwig's writing though goes yeah. to show you. Um, yeah, that was that was four for me. Yeah, four for me. Oh, my list like disappeared. Uh, four for me. I had like because I I I like both of these, so I just have the Borat like series in general. Right. Um, I don't. I really don't know. Which one I enjoy more, but they're both like I find them hysterical. Even the new one was really good too. Yeah, I prefer the original, but Borat yeah. didn't quite make my list, to be honest. But it's another one that was on the outskirts for sure. Yeah. Uh, three for me is one that we actually did on the podcast. What we do in the shadows, like Watiti. Oh, I forgot that about was that too. like an all the office style humor. Yeah, the the vampire jokes and like just the performances of the actors. That's another one that I was like cracking up the whole time watching it. I forgot about that. It's another like stupid humor, like not not yeah, not not quite like Napoleon Dynamite level, but close. Yeah, there's a bunch of other like there's just so many great moments in it. Like you like you find out the Beast is actually like the dude's ex girlfriend. Yeah, and like just I like like the stupid humor in it where it's like where it's like you haven't like i need you to clean the bloody dishes yeah. like they're literally like bloody because they're vampires like it's just stupid I like, like, stuff the like that. werewolf like people that they like beef with yeah them. Mm-hmm. it's like so dumb yeah and i think because i like horror so i like when they make fun of the horror tropes i find it like, yeah. a little bit more funny you know yeah but yeah that was number three so yeah uh, uh, three i had uh the hangover which I just feel like it may not be like the the funniest, but I just terms of like quality of a movie, like the funniest comedy, it's up there, and I, I found it really funny too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was on my list too, a little bit further yeah. down, but yeah. Two, I'm gonna cheat a little, um, because I'm gonna include a bunch here, and it's just the whole uh, Jackass series one through four. Yeah, those movies are fucking hysterical, bro. There's so, yeah. like the shit that they do is so outrageous, and like there's so many funny and cool like stunts that they do. Yeah, that I remember. I w- that's like one of the movies that I would always watch with my friends, like at a, like at a sleepover when I was in like middle school yeah. and high school. Uh, yeah, so it's like late at night and just like crack up laughing at every single thing that they did. Yeah. Like Johnny, all like the whole cast is like you gotta love all of them. Like. Johnny Knoxville, you know, Steve O. Like Bam is kind of fucked now, apparently. But he wasn't yeah. in, in the fourth one. But bro, if you just like go from skit to skit, there's like so many funny like things yeah. in each of them. A lot of it like is very even, raunchy. Even you know? the new ones were really was really good too. hmm Yeah. I feel like it is a like it, the the fourth one didn't really have as much charm as the originals because you could tell it's like on a higher budget and it's like a studio yeah kind of yeah done thing where the originals are basically like just literally like, like in their backyard and shit yeah there's like no fucking safety precautions yeah. like they almost died like probably mad there used to be a shot with one of them it was called like mm-hmm. Viva La Bam I forgot who it was well no was I think Jackass originally was a show oh yes you're movie. right you're right you're right but yeah Viva La Bam though was a show also I don't know what yeah. the fuck they did on there but. It was like it followed one of the kids, like not kids. It was one of the guys' like lives, but he did like stupid shit like that, like all the time with the show. Yeah, yeah. I think Bam was the one where like they would fuck with his parents all the time. Yeah, he had like the fat ass dad, and like they would remember they like lit off firecrackers in his room. They put like a crocodile in his house, and his mom was like bugging out. Yeah. I remember the the one where like his dad's sitting on the toilet, and he just comes in and starts like beating the fuck out of him, like. There's just so, there's like, like I said, if you just go through each skit, there's like so many yeah, funny yeah. ones. But yeah, that was, two, that was two, that was two. So, what you got? Yeah, two I had super bad. I mean, that's like one of my favorite, like, 
favorite movies of all time. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just, you know, you said yeah. it, you, you pretty much covered it. All right. Yeah. So here's my number one. It's a movie that is very unknown, and I don't even know if you've heard of it, but it's called American Movie. Um, oh, like the fucking puppet movie? No. Oh. No. No. no what that, am I thinking would, of? That would not be my funniest movie of I was all like, time. I was so. like, the movie sucks. Yeah. The movie is called, it's called American Movie. Basically, what it is, is it's a documentary. It's not acting. It's just a documentary. And it follows this guy who's trying to make a movie, basically. Mm-hmm. And it, let me check the guy's name. Hold on. It follows this guy named Mark Bork, Borkhart and his friend Mike Shank. And they're just like trying to make a movie. But this guy is like so stupid and so out of it that like you think that he's a character that's given lines, but he's just that insane and stupid. So the guy who like made the movie is just following a dude around and recording him like being mean. But it's just so funny, like the shit that he comes out with. Like, it's yeah. lit- it literally is, like, a character from The Office, but he's just a real person. And, like, knowing that it's a real person just makes it so funny. I, this is one that you would really like if you watched. I should watch this, yeah. But I How watched... How find this movie? Uh, I actually... I listened to another podcast about movies, which is mm-hmm. what actually inspired me to, to start this. this. But it's called Sardonicast. It's, a, it's, like, three film YouTubers that I like that... that basically just do a similar kind of thing, like talk about a movie each week or whatever, and whatever's going on. And they reviewed it on that, and it seemed like something right up my alley. Yeah. So I watched it, and since watching it for the first time, I've watched it, like, probably three more times again since. Mm -hmm. And I watched it, like, for the first time, like, maybe six months ago. So for me to rewatch a movie that many times, like, and still laugh every time. It hold up when you saw it. Bro, still, every time, bro. It's mad funny. It's, like, one that I also love to show people. Like, I love showing my friends, like, I'm watching yeah. it with them. Just so they see, like, how insane this guy is. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I would definitely... I, I'm think, I was thinking about recommending it for an episode one day. It's just, like, very hard to find. We'd probably yeah. have to, like, buy the DVD. But, yeah, that, I think that... It, I think that actually is the funniest movie ever made. By, like, a, a, a wide margin. Stuff, dude. But, yeah. American movie. Check it out, yeah. please. What do you got? What's your um, number one? One, I actually, I had Jackass. The original Jackass. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I like I just think, like, that's always, every time I go to the movies and saw that, that was the funniest. It's the most I laugh when I see a movie. Like, I remember, mm-hmm. like, I saw the last one, like, I had a fucking, like, I don't, like, catch my breath. Like, I literally, like, couldn't breathe from how much I was laughing. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that one, uh, the, yeah, the fourth one. Me and my friends went to a. Yeah. We had like had a few beers and then went to go see it. So funny, crying in the theater. Yeah. But yeah, it's just. I mean, I already said enough about it before. Yeah. But why were you saying it's not like a traditional choice for number? Or like you didn't think I was gonna expect it as your number one? I feel like cause when people think of like comedy, they think of like like a script, like a movie. They don't, mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like people don't think of Jackass. Yeah, it's true. But yeah. All right, that was that was a good that was a fun one. I want you to watch American movie though at some point. Yeah, sure. Um, maybe watch it with a couple of friends who are like have the same kind of humor as you. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, but yeah, all right. So with that out of the way, we could now move on to our final film of the day, which you recommended on last episode. You could you could introduce it. Yeah. Go ahead. So I recommended Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Um, I'm actually not even a big fan of the original movie. I didn't really even even like it that much. But after watching Barbie, I just started watching more Ryan Gosling. Uh, excuse me. Sorry. Um, and I've always heard like her great things about this movie, and Darren Vlanaway is a great director. I was did I say his name wrong? That his name is uh, Denis, not Darren. Denis. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so going into this, I had pretty high expectations, and it, honestly, it didn't disappoint. I don't know about you, man, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is my second yeah. time watching it, and fantastic. 
tech like technically from yeah. the uh cinematography score sound design everything it's perfect it's top notch yeah. the film is it's probably the most most visually stunning movie i've ever seen i would say oh yeah it's so a, many it's cool a masterpiece shots. yeah yeah and the, the shot of like joy the huge joy looking at ryan gosling yeah like it's like memed so much but the shot is like so beautiful honestly like i remember like because you always see that that like picture on twitter and shit like that but like now watching the movie like the context behind the 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 scene in the movie like yeah it's pretty fucked up yeah because you have this yeah for those of you who don't know the context of it yeah like joy is basically like the alexa of the future it's like an ai and Ryan Gosling's character basically like falls in love with his and in order to like for whatever plot reasons of the movie in order to like keep himself safe he has to like wipe the memory of it so the AI like doesn't even know him anymore and then he sees like a giant ad for the AI basically yeah and it's like him like basically crying like looking at it yeah um i think Ryan Gosling does a pretty great job in this Although I don't love him, I think I enjoy his comedic performances more, for sure. I think he does well in this yeah. movie. Um, and yeah, I think the besides how visually like breathtaking it is, I think the direction is just the need yeah. they'll, they'll know. Like, there's a reason he's my favorite director, and like I don't, you haven't seen a lot of his movies, Joe. No, but I haven't seen Dune yet. You've seen Arrival. You've seen yeah. this, like. He just makes bangers. He makes yeah. such great movies. I've seen Prisoners. Prisoners. Um, the only one of his that I was kind of mixed on is Enemy. I didn't really like that one. What's but that about? It's like, it stars Jake Gyllenhaal, and it's basically like, for whatever reason, he finds like a guy who looks identical to him. And it's just like, he has to like figure out what the fuck is going on. I don't know. It's like a weird, like mind bending one. Yeah. But, um, the thing that I always say about, about uh, this director is, like, he, he takes these, like, grand environments and huge kind of, like, like, large-scale worlds and complicated stories, but he manages to make it, like, personal in the stories. They're very intimate yeah. movies. Like, Arrival, it's this huge, large-scale alien invasion that involves the entire planet, but... The movie really is just about a mother coming to with the fact that she knows her daughter is going to die yeah. and going through with it anyway. It's like this personal level to a bigger story. I think he's very great at doing that. Um, and it's in this, it's not as prominent, but I did enjoy the story the second yeah. more the second time around. Um, I, I think like probably, I like the story. Yeah. I thought the story was pretty good. I think it's a cool twist how it, like Ryan Gosling, or his name's Kay in the movie. Yeah. Um, how he's basically convinced that he's like the son of uh, of Decker. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the audience is pretty much convinced as well. And it turns out like he actually had a daughter, not a son. And I know there's the, because there's a scene, like the context was, there's a scene like where they're trying to, so we didn't really explain the movie. So basically, it takes place in the future, and there's these things called replicants, and they're like basically, uh, like basically AI, like aliens. No, not AI aliens. Like I'm sorry, like they're super advanced, like robots. Super that... advanced, like robots, and they look like humans and stuff. And the replicants are like some of them gone rogue, and they get hunted down. And there's new uh, robots now. I don't know what they're called, like the new models. No, nah, they're still called replicants. They're, they're still. Just like... But like they're they're all, they're basically good, and it just follows this cop, who's who's a newer model, and uh, basically they find out that there's an a replicant that gave birth. It's like the first like artificial birth. Yeah. And there's like and like during the movie, you it's they, they believe or at least like it's revealed that he's like the he's the he was born like he's the first born like replicant. And, like, you could tell, like, it's, like, a really, like, a struggle, big struggle for him. And then, like, towards the end of the movie, it's revealed that, like, it actually wasn't him. He was a copy. 
So he has like yeah. all the all the replica, all the like I don't, I don't know what to call call the child, I guess. Yeah. All like the kids, like memories and stuff. So you think like him remembering it, it's like him his actual memories, but because it's a copy of the the uh, the child, it's just his like you know programmed in him. Yeah. I thought that was a cool twist with how yeah. like, the memory maker was actually the, the daughter. Yeah. That was pretty interesting. And like when she says someone lived this looking at his memory, it's like her memory. That's why yeah, and that's why she's crying. crying. And it like makes more sense, obviously, yeah. when you rewatch it. Um uh, like I said before though, another Jared Leto. I actually really like his character in this. I think he's like perfectly cast and he does a great I, job. Yeah. As like this godlike kind of, he's the creator of. He basically plays the villain. Yeah. He like makes. He believes he's like a higher power, basically. Yeah. And he wants like an army of replicants. He basically he wants to find the child, so that he can figure out how to make replicants that are able to like reproduce. Or, yeah. Or whatever. Um, because the replicants, you kind of like don't really know which side to take, because the replicants are discriminated against because they're not human and they're like forced to work or whatever yeah. whatever it is they do um and but they think oh if we could like procreate on our own then we're just as good as humans you know we don't deserve to be like discriminated against or forced yeah. to like do what we don't want to do so it's like a interesting dynamic where you kind of have to like pick a side in a way. yeah even ryan gosling's character is like on the fence about it oh yeah the whole time like you don't know what he's gonna do yeah um, I think Harrison Ford did pretty good returning. Yeah. Uh, like you said, I, mean, though, I, I, I prefer yeah. this to the original. Oh, definitely. yeah. This is a way, uh, such a higher quality movie than mm-hmm. the original. Yeah. And you know, watching this um, got me thinking, like, how great would, like, a Denis Villeneuve Star Wars movie be? Yeah. He's not afraid to do IP. Like, he did Blade Runner, and he's doing Dune right Dune. now, which is going to be a trilogy. Like a, like a Star Wars film set in, like, his like his vision. Yeah. It would look amazing, first of all. But, um, he would never yeah. do it. I, I don't know if he would do... I don't think he's don't the type that would want to work for Disney. But if he gets the check, fuck it. Yeah. You think he'd ever do, like, a superhero movie? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe something in DC. But I don't think he likes like the whole shared universe kind of thing. I don't think he would like I don't think he would like the whole shared universe kind of thing, but maybe something in DC. Yeah, DC I think would be the only Maybe like a Batman like spin off project, like the Batman spin off, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think of my favorite scene. Um Yeah, there's a lot of good scenes, I'm trying to think. Honestly, it might be the uh, the fight between him and and like that girl in the, the water. The ocean, yeah, yeah, where like the water's overtaken the uh, the ship, and like Harrison Ford is like bobbing for air, and he yeah he saves him, and um yeah, uh, Kay saves him and says like for like for all anyone knows, you you died out there. Like now, yeah. people so people think he's dead. He could like go see his daughter in peace. And it was like, because he originally you think he's gonna kill him because that's his order. They tell him to kill Deckard, like yeah. his whoever, like the lady who is like his supervisor or whatever. So you think he's gonna kill him, and he ends up saving him, which is just shows that he's a like, complex and yeah, has, like, like he... and thoughts, you know, like even he's though he's a just... replicant. Yeah, that's one I mean, of my favorites. I'm trying to think of the other, like other scenes that I really liked. Even the opening of the scene that was really I really enjoyed too. I forget what's the what was the opening. At him and uh, Dave Batista, like he oh, finds him yeah, on the yeah. farm. That's a great yeah. That's actually is a great scene as well. Batista's good in it, even though he's like in a small. Role. Yeah, he's in a tiny role. Um. I like the scene of him going and talking to the the memory lady, who, who in the end we find out is the daughter. Um, yeah, I thought that was a good scene. Also, there's the meme from it when he's like, when he's like, "God damn it!" and like slams yeah. everything. That's like, <laughs> that's what it's from. Ryan Gosling is like a terrible screamer. Like he's not good at yelling. Yeah, no. 
I don't I know. I was actually like, seen... I was like, crying at that. No, I've seen that scene yeah. before. Yeah, and also the the nice guys. He has a scene where he's like yelling, and he just sucks at yelling. It's funny yeah. how he sounds. It's like comedic. Yeah, but and then yeah, obviously he's my favorite character. He gets the most screen time. And although I did, I did like Joy as well. Yeah, on the Armas. Um, would you think of like the like the sex scene? Well, I don't think they don't really show much, but Joy like. She's a hologram, so she basically like yeah, she has no physical body. Another yeah, so woman. she like tells a girl to come because she finds out that he's like a real, he's born like he's not like a computer. So she's saying like, oh, like, like you know, like this girl's real, and mm-hmm. she kind of like projects onto him. I mean, I, I don't know. I thought it it made sense like in the context of the scene. I guess, like in for the I don't know. It, yeah, it didn't really bother me that much, honestly. Yeah, me neither. I thought it was cool. Yeah. It was like interesting. Yeah. Um, and then that girl is secretly part of like a. She's a replicant, also. I think it's her. Yeah. At the end. Um, yeah. Actually, no. But I was gonna say my favorite character. I said K. Uh, Joy. It's cool. And I also I really like the villain. I really like Jared Leto's character. What's the character's name? I forget his name, but one detail about him that I really liked is the way like his voice echoed. Every time he spoke, because he was in that room, yeah, and it just like was this like vibe with like a higher power. It kind of reminded me of like a priest talking in mass. Like it sounded similar to that, and I think it's it's fitting because he sees himself as this almost like biblical figure. Yeah, like so yeah. it's like a small detail, but I really enjoyed that. Like yeah, that, that no, goes right. back to the sound design. So um, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know what else. It... Anything else to say? Yeah, I'll say uh, just check it out. If you haven't already, it, it's a fun. It's yeah. two hours and forty something minutes. It didn't but feel like I, a drag. Yeah, man. I didn't really feel bored at any point. Yeah, story like kind of moves, you know. Yeah, but I gave it a four and a half star, so yeah. a nine out of ten. To me, like it should be a five star, but I just don't like like the Blade Runner lore enough to warrant that if i was more like into the idea of like the replicants and i cared more about like blade runner maybe if i like the original a little more i think it, it would be a five but it's a very see, high four and a half see like i i agree with what you're saying like i don't like the original yeah but i still give this a five because like i even think on its own it's still like a, a near perfect like there really isn't a, like i try to think if there's anything wrong with the movie like i try to think back like, I, I really can't find anything wrong with it Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I definitely understand. Like, I yeah. could easily see it being a five. Yeah, I think if I cared more about like Blade Runner as like an IP, an IP. Or, like, yeah. that's fair. Then I think it would be a higher. Yeah. Would be would get that that coveted five star. Five star, yeah. But, yeah, that was a great choice. Um, I'm glad we we watched that one. I want you to watch yeah. the naval like filmography as well. Yeah, but, I'm sure. I like his other stuff. Yeah, I was actually uh, looking can... to watch. Uh, what's it's um, not with uh, him, but with the guy from Babylon. Uh, what's his Damien name? Damien Chazelle. Yeah, with Ryan Gosling. It, what's it called? First Man or Last One? Oh, First Man. I've seen it. Is that good? It's okay. It's pretty good. It's it's definitely different than. Uh... I feel like I've never seen him not do like a musical type of. Like anything involved with music? Because I see a solo yeah, yeah. land. Uh, Babylon and Whiplash. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all right. I mean, I don't know. It's fine. It's not as good as others. No, definitely not. And also, like, like I said, I'm not really a huge Ryan Gosling guy. I think he does great. He does good in this movie, but yeah, I'm not a big fan. Um, but yeah, I want to do the Q and A though, really quick, before we yeah. wrap things up, and then I'll recommend my movie and all that. So we got a few questions. One is from uh, at sophia.k.ua, frequent frequent question asker. So thank you for the question. She asks, uh, if you could, what is a movie or TV show you would erase from memory just so that you can experience it for the very first time again and why? Okay. Probably One Piece. Is... Really? Yeah. Why? Like, that was the most there... invested I've ever been in a show. Right. For me, it's got to be Arrival. 
I just like I I think the twist is so crazy that like just being able to experience yeah. it for the first time again and be like, what the fuck, like you know, yeah. Um, for, I don't know. Maybe Avengers Endgame also could be one. Yeah, it's another one. Like getting that theater experience and like seeing what happens to all these characters yeah. after all this time, you know. Um, but yeah, I'd say Arrival. If I had to choose one, it's a yeah, great question though. That's right. Yeah. Um, we got a couple more from. We got a lot this from, week, huh? Nothing crazy, but from Tom, frequent, uh, not frequent, but semi-frequent, uh, I guess, of the podcast. He's been on here a few times. Um, he actually somehow asked the exact same question. <laughs> not your favorite movie, but what's a movie you wish you can see for the first time again? Okay, we already did that one. Yeah. So, uh, but then he asked, "Yeah, got to be quicker than that, bro." He asked. Best movie you'd never watch again. Mm-hmm. Uh, All right. I'm not going to say I'd never watch this again, but probably. it would take a lot for me to, to watch it again. But I'll say like 12 Years a Slave. Probably. Pain. That movie, Pain. I fucking hate that movie. <laughs> but it's supposed to be the best movie that you'd never watch again. Oh, the, so like what do you mean best movie? So it's never... good. It's good. But you wouldn't watch it again for whatever reason. Oh, I thought and like you mind. Like, I'd say twelve years of slave because I don't uh, want to watch slaves being abused. Yeah. That's why I wouldn't watch it. But it's still a five star. Probably, probably. I don't know. Mother made me like really, really anxious. Yeah, yeah. That's I a wouldn't good watch that for a while. Um, Very good movie, maybe the movie, the movie, come and see. It's about a. Uh, World War Two. It's War, very yeah. graphic and like insane. Yeah. I don't know. It's just a lot to watch. I'm not gonna say, and it's also three hours, so yeah. I'm not rushing back to rewatch it. But that's another one's a five star. Um, I don't know. I guess I'd go with Twelve Years a Slave so if I had to choose one. Yeah. And then his last question is: What is your favorite memory of 2023 so far? A good question, not movie yeah, related, memory. but um, for me, I'd probably say like graduating, like my last uh graduating college, my last week at school, friends kind of like that farewell, saying goodbye, and to the past like four years yeah. of my life, and those friends, you know. So, yeah, probably my, my graduation. Yeah, you had a big year this year. I'm having yeah. a pretty basic year, so mine is probably. I went to Toronto this year. I really enjoyed that. That was probably my favorite trip this year. Yeah, I know you're like traveling a lot more now. Yeah. Since since you've been working and like saving and stuff, which is cool. Yeah, it's nice. Um, it's nice. Yeah, I'm still unemployed, so my my traveling day. Don't worry, you'll lose. give your whole life to work, buddy. Don't worry. Yep. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, though, uh, Joe's a nurse, and yeah. I'm a. I just finished my uh, civil engineering degree. So Yeah, I don't think we've ever told set our jobs. Yeah. I'm going to be crunching numbers probably the rest of my life. Uh It'll be fine, but yeah, you know, we're we're more than just movie buffs. We have lives yeah. outside. Of this, sadly. I wish uh, I wish it was just movies, this. Yeah. I wish enough people watch this that <laughs> we I would mean, get it's up to you guys, honestly. If you want to make us famous and make me never work again, that would be nice. Yeah, it's not like we're competing with like every other person who wants to get rich quick yeah, and no. live an easy life. But yeah. Anyways, um, Tom, thanks for the question. It's cool to talk about uh, some non-movie related things here and there. And also, yeah, if you guys want to ask questions, ask us anything. It doesn't have to be about movies. Yeah. But, yeah. All right. So that'll wrap up episode 29. I'm just going to give my movie rec. Yeah. And just because we got the trailer... And it gave me some nostalgia. I want to re- go back and check out Saw again, the original. I haven't um, seen that so movie in a while. Yeah. Yeah. So I watched it like close to fucking like fall, dude. I'm kind of getting excited now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's August, September, October. That's it. Then yeah. fucking FNAF is coming. But uh, That's my yeah, I'll say. Yeah, let's do the original Saw probably. Yeah. Um. And then what else next week is there? In movies, I think the Blue last Beetle. voyage of the Demeter is coming up. That ass Blue Beetle is in the next two weeks. Hey, dude, it's next week, August 12th. Are you serious? 
Yeah. Oh shit. All right. So Blue, Blue Beetle's Beetle. next episode. Yeah. Let me see what else. Hold on. I think there was something else this week. What's coming it out this Friday? The boy, oh, the Meg. Boys. The Meg two. The Meg two. I mean, yeah. I don't. It had like a fucking zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes. So yeah. I'm honestly, not... I'd rather watch the Last Voyage. Yeah, that movie looks sick. Yeah. We'll probably watch the Meg though anyway, and we could like briefly discuss it, yeah. like how we did with uh, Talk to Me. Um. Was a mystery movie playing tomorrow, dude? Yeah, I saw that. I didn't end up getting a ticket for whatever reason, but yeah. So for next episode, I'll say for now, watch Saw, watch Blue Beetle, and yeah, fuck it, yeah, just watch the Last Voyage of the Demeter. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, for those of you who don't know it, it's man. like a, it's basically a vampire movie, but. It's from Bram Stoker's like original novel, except it follows one chapter of the book, which is the journey on the ship that Dracula takes. Very cool concept. So yeah, it looks more like Dracula's more like a creature than like an actual like person. Yeah, pretty good cast too. So yeah. All right, you wanna what, what list should we? What should we list next week? Our top ten. What? Well, I was gonna say top ten like comic book suits like. Okay. Suits that, like in in it doesn't have to be like from a comic book movie. It could be like any like like costume in a movie. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's that's a good, that's a good one. It probably like inevitably will be a bunch of like superheroes. Yeah, stuff, yeah. But Likely. all right, yeah. So uh, thanks for listening, everyone. Um, follow us on our Thank socials. You loyal fans. Yeah, thanks guys. If whoever's still here. Um, also, we never really addressed it, but we did reach our one-year anniversary on of the podcast. Oh, we did? So, yeah. So, and we gained like three followers in a year. Let's so, go. pretty good. Um, Any progress? So, th- thanks, guys, for listening. Follow us on socials. Follow our letterbox. Follow yeah. our Twitter. Um, and that's really it. So, thanks, guys. I'll see, see you in you two mean, weeks. In two weeks.